All right, this is my lithium setup here with my 2000 watt Zentris inverter. I got four Lion Energy batteries, which gives me 420 amp hours uh, storage. And then we uh, have the 2000 watt inverter so we can run anything in this camper we want. When it's plugged in, it, it turns into a charger, so it charges the batteries. Now, when you say anything, what are you talking about? Like air conditioners? So you can run air conditioner, microwave, coffee pot, air fryer, whatever you want to run. When we came down here, we were running the refrigerator off the electricity the whole time instead of having to do propane. And last night, we were running the air conditioner for about an hour because it was so hot off of batteries. Oh, that's fantastic. Are you two batteries? Right? Right there. You got two more here. And this is my battery shunt, which everybody should have if they have batteries. It tells you the state of the charge of the battery. Okay. You never go by a voltmeter. You always get you a battery shunt, they call it. These are my solar cables. This is so I can hook them both into parallel. Just around about here. Crazy 600 watts on each panel. Are these both the same kind of panels? Yeah, that one's just a couple years older. And that's why it's faded a little bit. Right. I'm okay. gonna out in the rain. This is 50 feet here, actually. Now I'm out of this here, so I could just plug in. And so now this is hooked to the battery, or yeah, to, and it's gonna charge the battery. Yeah, it goes directly in where the batteries are, and it's charging the batteries out. Actually, it goes to the solar controller in there, which goes to the batteries. So it's getting in almost 1,000 watt hours between the solar and being plugged in. All right, we got the original 100 watt amp hour came with the camper. Then I got a 50 in the middle and then 110 watt on this side, which gives me a total of 260 watt hours. Plus, Plus the 600 on the ground gives me 860. It's been around a long time. It's, it's called Tucson Sway Control System. It's been around at least 10 years, but not too many people have heard about it. It's got a little computer module and a sensor in there, and it senses when the trailer starts to sway. And if it starts to sway enough, it'll activate brakes according to which side needs it to control the sway. And I'd actually tested it when I put it on. I took it down a, a road and just started swerving back and forth, making my trailer sway. And when it starts activating, this light here will start flashing slowly then you know that it's working. And otherwise it just stays solid green. And it'll actually tell you if there's a problem there. Like uh, one time I was riding and I saw it flickering red once in a while. And come to find out my plug wasn't connected very good. I had to fix it, put it back in and we can start working better. So do you need to be monitoring and watching the light as you're driving down the road? Uh, I just glance at it every once in a while. You, you don't really need to look at it. It's all automatic. It's This is just a visual for you to let you know when you first hooked it up. You first hook up, it's green, you know it's good to go. It runs about $400. And once you have that, you don't need anything else, in my opinion. So I wouldn't need to have sway bars and do sway bars anymore? You wouldn't need that friction bar, no. Now, it's weight distribution hitch is a different thing. Even though it has sway control in it, that, that's helping even the load of your camper is what its main purpose. To be honest with you, if you ever watch videos of people that have these racks, they have weight distribution hitches on them. It doesn't completely eliminate the problem. It just helps it. So I know earlier you said that you think that every camper trailer should come with this built in. I mean, yeah. that's why. Well, I'm sure people would pay $400 to have that on there if they could from the factory. But in my opinion, that's a little money for safety people. Yeah, everyone should come with it. Then you'd have to worry about that anymore. I know I've been driving down the road and felt sway and it's not a safe feeling. I go into kind of panic mode and it's not a good feeling when you feel that. Yeah. People tell me about they feel sway. I always tell them your electric brake controller is your best friend. When you reach over and hit that brake on a, on a trailer and it'll straighten right behind you. You don't, you don't hit the brakes of the truck, just hit the brake controller. Great tip. So how hard was it to install this or what was involved? On this camper, it was a little more involved because they run the wires up inside the camper for the brakes. And you have to have uh, wires running individually for the left and right because it's not gonna just lock them both up. It's gonna lock whatever, or no, I shouldn't say lock. It's gonna engage whichever side it needs to engage to control the sway. I think I said earlier, it would, in icy conditions, if you were on an icy road or something, it will not let the brakes lock up on the trailer. It works like an analog brake system 
and your truck so it helps keep everything under control. There's videos out there of driving in on wet roads and icy roads and stuff, and they're testing it. You, you see it. I know you'd mentioned what to do if something starts to sway or feel the sway, but you know, if that starts to happen, I don't know. I would have to think about what to do, but if this would do it automatically. Exactly. That's why I, I always say that this, this would be better than anything else.